Now I'm somebody who loves surprises I love being shocked by something that's going on But in a good way of course And that's exactly what we're getting ready to talk about today But before we do Now you know I usually tell you Go ahead and subscribe to the channel Go ahead and leave a like on the video Go ahead and have your notifications turned on And we're gonna do all that for sure And make sure you do those three things But look down below We got a little surprise here Because we got some Team Keep It Clean merch so y'all check out the merch store right down below the video. Now there's some shirts. That, I don't know why they're showing backwards. But we're going to get that taken care of soon. But y'all check out the Team Keep It Clean merch. I love y'all. Appreciate y'all. It's still a work in progress. So bear with me. But it is available. So I love y'all. Now, the surprise that we got from the Baltimore Ravens. Not from us this time. Calvin Oy. Calvin Oy was back practicing today. John Harbaugh did say, like, look. We're going to have to see how he practices before we actually put him out there on the field. But the fact that Kyle Vannoy was actually out there, I said, what? Because I was thinking, not necessarily worst case scenario, but I was thinking that it was going to be a real possibility that Kyle Vannoy was out for a while, especially with it being an eye injury that can be very tricky um, because it's just so much unknowns that go on in there. So I, I was thinking that, we were going to get a, a notification any day that Kyle Vinoy had been placed on injury reserve and he was going to be out for at least four games. That, that's what I was expecting. I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to put it out there, anything like that. But it's certainly what I had been thinking for a while once we heard that it was an orbital eye fracture injury. I'm like, man, I don't even know if I even heard about something like that before. So I was expecting what is not the worst, but I was expecting some bad news with him. But the fact that he's back. I said, oh, okay, right. so, uh, another super duper Kyle. Like, he ain't no Kyle Hamilton, but still, Kyle Vinoy, shout out to him, and we glad that he is back. Now, I wonder if he does play, which I would expect him to, but if he does play in the game Sunday against the Raiders, is he going to wear, like, a patch on his eye? Is he going to wear something? Is he going to wear, like, an extra pair of shades? Is he going to have an extra visor? Or what's his attire going to be to really protect his eye so we'll see about that when we get there but that is a beautiful thing that Kyle Vannoy is officially back in the building now something else that we ended up getting surprised by because Nate Wiggins he had missed a day of practice but then he came back to practice we were like oh yeah let's go Nate Wiggins first round draft pick back in the building and then he missed practice again so we were like hey what's what's happening with him what's going on with number two what's up with it but Harbaugh did clear it up today because Harbaugh said that Nate Wiggins, he was in a car accident. He did say that he's good. So that is a beautiful thing. He said Nate Wiggins is fine. He's straight. He's good. But um, that he will not be playing in this game uh, against the Raiders this week. So again, with car accidents, for those of you, a lot of us have been in car accidents before. We know that. Hey, if you're good, that's a great thing. If you come out good, that's a great thing. It doesn't always happen like that, which is unfortunate. But sometimes it could take a day or two or even three till you really feel the effects of whatever that car accident is. But we are just glad, first and foremost, that Nate Wiggins is good. Uh, he's healthy. He's safe. All that's good. But um, he will be out this game. So whatever injury that he is dealing with, whatever, um, I guess, sort of – Whatever he's dealing with from that car accident, um, he's still dealing with that. So it's cool. He got time. And it's all right because the Baltimore Ravens, th this is, a, and again, ain't no shot at the Raiders or anything like that. Because you got Devontae Adams coming to town. You got Jacoby Myers coming to town. You got Minshew Mania coming into town who beat us last year at M&T Bank Stadium. So he ain't scared. He ain't scared. But the Baltimore Ravens, they do have them all in Humphrey. They do have a Brandon Stevens. They do have Aldarius Washington. They do have Jalen Armour Davis. They do have Super Duper Kyle Hamilton. And he's going to be playing a lot different this week. I would anticipate that. I anticipate this week he'll have a lot more freedom. Because last week against the Chiefs, like, <laughs> he ain't have all that freedom like normal. But um, I would anticipate that Ravens, their defense will be a lot more loose this week. Not loose to where you give it all up, but loose to where you just playing and having a lot more fun. So this is a game that Nate Wiggins, while we would have loved to see him play, uh, he's not going to, but it's fine. We'll see you next week. Now we've entered my favorite part of these videos where we get to hear questions from y'all. If you would like to be part of this, you can send me an email at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for our lovely Team Keep It Clean patrons, you can send your question directly on Patreon. And speaking of the Team Keep It Clean patrons, let's go to my guy, Nova. He said, Engraven, it's been a 
some time since I submitted a question. Last year, I didn't submit one, but between Tam and Achilles last year and this year, welcoming my first child has been an eventful year. Hey, congratulations on that. That's, that, that's really cool, man. I, I'm happy for you. We all happy for you. He said, uh, but now that I'm on a routine, here I am. Oh, that's, that's the toughest part about having a new, a new child. Uh, whether it's your first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Some of y'all even got, hey, that's, that's, y'all got it, man. But anyway, the routine. Because once you have a new child, oh, you could throw routine out the window. You could throw it out the window for a long time. Too. Anyway, he said, um, but fun fact, my son was born at the end of overtime for the Super Bowl. So that's my reason why we didn't make it because there's no TV in the delivery room. There you go. That's I'll take that. I'll take that. That's why the Ravens, they acted up the way that they did in the AFC Championship. He said joking, of course. But as a new dad, I want to congratulate you and the family on a new addition to your family and hope that you and the family are doing well and glad to see your continued success with the channel. I appreciate that, Nova. Thank you. And thank you for being a part of everything. Because I remember you would, uh, you would send a lot of questions before, which we appreciate for sure. So thank you for that. He said, anyway, my questions. After watching the Chiefs game, I had about the same takeaways as you. Looking at what we need uh, at the trade deadline, I'm realistic that we cannot get anyone to bring in to help our O-line. But we can get someone to either help the pass rush or receiver to help the perimeter. I really do think they will let our current guys play out in regards to the pass rush. So that leaves perimeter help as an option. I was talking with a friend of mine who is also a Ravens fan. And we got to thinking, who could Baltimore realistically go after to help us get over the hump in the playoffs? Let me know what you think. And that's something to think about, too. One of the biggest th things the Baltimore Ravens need to go after in the playoffs to help them get over the hump is to beat themselves. <laughs> it's to beat themselves. Don't forget about the run game. Obviously, you still got to pass the ball, too. So let's not act like, oh, yeah, the Baltimore Ravens, they just need to run, 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 run. While you do need to run, 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 you still going to need to pass, 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 pass as well. So... Why not get somebody to help compliment the offense, help compliment Lamar Jackson, compliment the other receivers, and just really take them over the top. Anyway, he said, um, we trade a compensatory pick, uh, round four or five, for DeAndre Hopkins. Wow. Wow. Um, wow. Wow. Uh, Titans are seeing what life is like without DeAndre Hopkins right now. We know he's obviously not a long-term solution for the Titans at all. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins has some of the best hands in the world. Um, DeAndre Hopkins obviously still got plenty left in the tank. Um, he is not in the prime of his career, but DeAndre Hopkins can still play for sure uh he's somebody that lamar jackson wanted before so let's anyway continue with his question he said uh, d hop is in the final years of his contract and he's old enough to be <laughs> he said he's old enough to be a baltimore ravens wide receiver uh he also has expressed interest in playing with lamar but if we acquired him we would be uh he would be for catches along the perimeter issue would be is 10 uh is tennessee and after last year i don't think they like us enough to do business well, if they disliked him enough to get rid of him, they would. <laughs> he said another one. is our third-round pick for Cortland Sutton. Okay, another, another good one. Uh, I'm not sold that he's in the plans for long-term uh, in Denver, and for the reasons aforementioned, he would add value. This would be uh, an option. This would only be an option if another guy, uh, they have like Mims or uh, they break out to a point where Sutton looks expendable. I'm not certain how likely that is to happen, though. Yeah, I don't know about that. Especially you got Bo Nix. That's your... um. The rookie quarterback, who is he's starting too. Um, so we'll see. Anyway, he said another option is trading a fourth and Rashad Bateman for Devontae Adams. Uh, Adams is being floated around uh, going to the Jets, which makes sense given his relationship with Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. However, Las Vegas isn't contending and the Jets don't have the money to afford him on his current contract. But if Baltimore would be willing to pony up some of the money, he would instantly change how defenses play us as there is a threat outside and you can't just load the box. I love Bateman, but based on his lack of chemistry with Lamar for all these years, in addition to his extra team friendly contract and his age, that would definitely appeal to Las Vegas. Some good points. He said, but therein lies the issue as the Ravens don't pay for wide receivers, even when their quarterback is in their prime. <laughs> it also requires a restructure as we don't have much money either. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on these hypotheticals. As far as the money, if Ravens want to bring in somebody, they can make it happen. Uh, they still have the option to restructure Lamar Jackson. They have the option to restructure uh, Mark Andrews. So they, they got some other guys, too, who are on significant contracts, who are on larger contracts and whatnot, where they can move some money around if 
they chose to. He said the second question is regards to our running back room. Why I love seeing Henry and Lamar under center, it does need some work as to formations and how we utilize our running backs. I didn't have too much of a problem based on Thursday, but if we are going to get the most out of Henry, he needs to be out for pistol formations and RPOs. We also need to see Hill in the I formation and Mitchell once he returns. Oh, that's going to be lovely once he does. But do you think it's possible? This is possible with our brain trust we have a, a offensively at the moment. I, I do. I, I do for sure. We saw uh, Derrick Henry get off to a solid start uh, against the Chiefs. But the way that the game went, they just they took him out the game. They, 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 they took him out the game. And Ravens could have used him a little bit more. Maybe not a lot more because Ravens were behind. They were trying to come back. And then time got on. Or it really wasn't on their side anymore. But um, he got off to a, a solid start. Offensive line play is, uh, play, play is such a big part in Derrick Henry's success moving forward. So if that offensive line play is right, then Derrick Henry, he will be just fine. Um, he also said, uh, and how likely do you see Mitchell supplanting Henry once uh, we get to the colder months in the season? I don't. I don't see him supplanting Henry at all. I think he'll get his fair share of carries, but Henry will be the majority of workload, and uh, Keith Mitchell could come in. And if Keith Mitchell can beat a Keith Mitchell from last year, he ain't going to need too many touches, man. Like, he, oh, man, he was so special. Was, it was so sad when he got hurt, man. It, it was so sad. I think that was probably the injury that I was saddest about last year was Keith Mitchell. I mean, obviously sad about all of them. You don't want to see nobody get hurt. But Keith Mitchell, oh, my goodness, that one hurt bad. He said, again, I, I love what Henry brings to the table, but I can only assume he's going to be the hammer in late games, like fourth quarter when we have a lead to protect, and also featured in playoff games, in which one can also assume Mitchell and Hill get more looks earlier in the game in the first half. I hope I explained that well. As always, looking forward to hearing your thoughts and stay safe. Yeah, I, I think Derrick Henry was brought in to be their – Maybe workhorse running back Get the majority of the load uh, RB1 officially Because Ravens have Ever since Mark Ingram um, And before Mark Ingram And after Mark Ingram They really haven't had an RB1 They haven't had that guy to Okay that's our starting running back They they had Mix and Master They had some Sometimes it's Gus Edwards Sometimes it's J.K. Dobbins Sometimes it's Justice Hill Sometimes it's Keith Mitchell it, it, it will go And there were some other people That came in too But they didn't have that guy Now with Derrick Henry They have that guy uh, So I expect it to be him Next question came from my guy Bilal. He said, "Hey, great, my name is Bilal. I've been watching you for four years now. Hey, appreciate that, man. Thank you." He said, "And first off, I would like to say God bless you and congratulations on your baby girl, man. You're a true class act. Oh, we, we we ain't nothing, but I, I appreciate that, man. Thank you." He said, "Um, and a remarkable example of a great man. You say all the time that you appreciate us, but it's your time to receive your flowers. Uh, you're really talented, intelligent, and devoted to your craft, and it's very inspiring to get up." And get out and pursue whatever passion you have in life. So again, man, thank you for giving us fire content. Man, I, I, I appreciate this, man. You better make me start crying, man. I, I appreciate this a lot, though, man. Th thank you. I, I, I Thank you. He said, um, I also wanted to share with you a story with my older brother. Shout out to Vino, living his best life out in L.A. Uh, it was funny uh, because we were having a conversation before the Kansas City versus Ravens game, and he said, I followed this guy off of YouTube that is very knowledgeable and outgoing. You should check them out. Uh, I stopped him because I already knew who he was talking about, and I said, oh, my. <laughs> oh man. Mm. I, I appreciate you, man. So shout out to you, Bilal. Shout out to your brother, Vino. Shout out to the both of y'all, man. I appreciate y'all. Thank, thank y'all for supporting. Um. He said, I stopped him because I already knew who he was talking about. And I said, my guy ain't graving. We shouted and laughed in excitement as we sang your old theme song. My brother is a big uh, fan of the channel. Uh, and he mentioned that you have the potential to be a Ravens reporter. And I agreed. Uh, sorry for a long email, but sometimes when someone deserves it, you have to let them hear it. Because no matter, <clears throat> because no matter how long it may take um, or may be, because tomorrow's not promised, you're awesome. Oh, and oh, you had a question after all that. <laughs> Oh, I appreciate you. I, I really do, man. I, I appreciate this. Man. He said, um, get into my question. Let me start off and first say it is not far fetched with how he is beloved in Baltimore already, but do you think that Lamar Jackson has the potential to be the greatest Raven of all time? Uh again, sir, thank you for being so kind and thank you for your time. Uh and <laughs> I ain't reading that last part, part, but he said, God bless you. I ain't reading that last part uh, for obvious reasons. We don't we not get into that. But anyway. Um, do you think Lamar Jackson has the potential to be the greatest Raven of all time? Mm. He does. Um, what it would take, though, I would say, obviously, at least one Super Bowl, um, maybe a couple. 
because obviously when people say the greatest the greatest raven of all time they're gonna go right to ray lewis um ray lewis was one of the best in his at his position for years lamar jackson he's also been one of the best at his position for years ray lewis he continued to show consistency he was amazing um he was a household name that's who so many people when they thought about the baltimore ravens boom they thought about Ray Lewis. You could say the same thing about the Baltimore Ravens right now. You think Baltimore Ravens, you think, oh, boom, Lamar Jackson. Um, but, yeah, I, I think he does have the potential to do that. It will take a lot. It will take a whole lot. Because, uh, you know, Ray Lewis, like, Ray Lewis is loved in Baltimore. Like, love, but Lamar Jackson is loved in Baltimore. Like, love, love Ray Lewis from Florida. Lamar Jackson from Florida. You just, hey, so, no, yeah, I, I, I do for sure feel like Lamar does have the potential to do that. Next question came from my guy Kenny from B Moore. He said, Hey, Graven, if we had a chance to get Devontae Adams, will you think the Ravens will go for it? Uh, I, I think they should. Would they? Mm, it depends on what he was going for. I don't think he would go for more than a third round pick. So I would think the Ravens should be all over something like that. Would they be willing to do it? Mm, that's the question right there because he is on his third contract i believe um sec second or third contract i think third i'm pretty sure it's his third um uh, but he's getting paid a significant amount of money would the ravens be willing to bring him over at that amount of money that's something that the baltimore ravens typically don't do uh but i would love if they changed their ways anyway he said uh also what do you think uh, he, he will bring to the team? Oh, if they got a uh, Devontae Adams, he will bring somebody with a lot of experience, somebody who is respected across the league at the wide receiver position. Uh, one of the best, most consistent receivers in the game. Uh, he's somebody that just continues to produce uh, regardless of who he has at the quarterback position. So I think if they brought in somebody like Devontae Adams, he could help open up Baltimore Ravens offense that much more, give them that much options as far as different ways that they could get production. Now, if he came over here, would I expect him to be the same Devontae Adams that he was with the Packers and early with the Raiders? No. Is he going to put up like 14, 1,500 yards? No. Not at all. But he would be somebody that could be relied on when their number was called. He's going to have some games where he go for 80 yards, go for 90, go for a low, over 100. But then he's going to have some games where he don't. But it's important that when his number is called that he picks up the phone. So he's somebody that could do that. And he's also somebody that can do both the on script and off script stuff. So perfect for the Ravens. He said, and another thing. Why did John Harbaugh say Derrick Henry is not here to get 25 to 30 carries? So why is he here? Uh, his game is to carry the rock. Don't you agree? Yes, we do. Now, with John Harbaugh, I think he was just trolling. Watch this game against the Raiders. Derrick Henry get like 25 carries or 25 touches. I, I could almost guarantee it, man. Derrick Henry is going to be heavily involved in this game. John Harbaugh is just trolling. He was just trolling. Like, John Harbaugh is not going to come out and say, all right, this is exactly what our game plan is for Derrick Henry. Let me tell the whole world. No, he ain't going to come out and do that. Because, again, remember, Harbaugh's always looking for that competitive advantage. Harbaugh's always looking to play mind games with the next opponent who's on the Baltimore Ravens' schedule. He plays mind games for current, and he plays mind games for the future as well. So that's why I ain't get upset. Uh, I know a lot of people did, which I can understand why, but that's why I ain't get upset with Harbaugh's comments the other day. He said, just some food for thought, I guess. Anyway, hope you and the wife and Carter and the baby girl are doing great. I'm out. Much love to you, Kenny. Appreciate you. Next question came from my guy, Keontae. He said, what's up, Engraving? Glad to see you looking well and out of the hoodie. Engraving feeling awkward. <laughs> Appreciate you. He said, I've got a question on the usage of Kyle Hamilton or the lack thereof. Could Kyle's role be more traditional with Trenton on the field, or was this just the game one game plan? That's such a great question. That is such a great question. I, I hope it, just, it was just for game one. That is something that we talked about all, all season long with Super Duper Kyle that we hope, and it shouldn't change, but – we hope that with uh, with Zach Orr taking over as defensive coordinator, that Kyle Hamilton continues to have the role that he's had. Now, in the Chiefs game, you play the Chiefs different. Ravens play the Chiefs different, but Chiefs have to be played differently because they are the Chiefs. So hopefully it was just a one-off with Kyle not being able to be the regular Kyle that we're used to seeing. So hopefully against these Raiders, we see him all over the field making plays a lot. So that, that's a very, very great question. He says, does Orr want him to be a traditional strong safety rather than the Swiss Army Knife from last year to limit injury, or will he be the super-duper Kyle after the first game trial and error? What are your thoughts? So, yeah, I, I think it was just a one-off for the Chiefs game because, again, you, gotta, you can't do stuff that the normal way you normally do, at least on defense you can. On offense, 
please, Ravens, get back to being yourselves. Hey, it was a good start. It was a good start. So next time, you just got to finish a lot more when we play the Chiefs in January, and y'all will take care of that. But, yeah, I think it was just a win-off with Super Duper Kyle and that he'll be back to normal against the Raiders. Next question came from Hanif. He said, do you? <laughs> like, it was straight up. <laughs> He ain't write no paragraph. He ain't write no explanation. He said, "Do you think we need a new coach?" Straight like that. Like you gotta respect the honesty, the how blunt he was. Do I think the Baltimore Ravens need a new coach? There have been a lot of times over recent years where I've thought they've needed a new coach. Right here, right now, this is not the time, in my opinion. Let's see how this season goes. If Baltimore Ravens, it depends on if Baltimore Ravens reach the ultimate goal, which is obviously the Super Bowl and to win the Super Bowl, then no. But if they fall short, it will depend on how they fall short. If they do the same thing over again and do it the same way, then we got to have a conversation. Next question came from my guy, Aaron. Real quick, Aaron, because it's all love. It always is. But just make sure next time. I know, hey, after that Chiefs loss, again, a lot of us, we ain't know what we were doing. We were, we were just lost out here in life in general after that Chiefs loss and the way that it ended, the way that it impacted our minds. And that, but next time, just send it to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. All love, though, my friend. He said, Angry Raven, hope all is well. I'm a bit puzzled. See, that's why you sent it to the wrong email because you was a bit puzzled, and that's okay. That's okay. We give everybody a one-time pass, but one time is it. That's it. But anyway, he said, I'm a bit puzzled by the recent attention given to Josh. Josh Allen? He said, despite that, he only managed to pass for 139 yards last night. In the midst of this, it seems like the potential of Devontae Walker has been forgotten. I've been somebody that forgot about it. Um, he said, uh, hold up. Yeah, Walker has been forgotten, in my opinion, considering him as a wide receiver three in this offense seems like a promising option so first we're talking about josh allen he only passed for 139 yards last night now let's think about this with josh allen yeah he ain't passed for that many yards last night but guess what dalvin cook's little brother was doing he's going off cook that running back for the bills he was going off so like think about because it you got to think about it like this if it was lamar jackson and he only passed for 139 yards but Derrick Henry or whoever, whatever running back was going off, we would be like, hey, Lamar ain't have to pass for no 250 yards, and we still blew them out. So it's the same thing in this case with Josh Allen. He ain't had to pass for a bunch of yards to blow the Dolphins out. Like, they, I really was hoping that it was going to be a close game. I was really hoping the Dolphins were going to win, too. But, man, like, even obviously, even before the concussion, it was just bad. It was all kinds of, it was rough, man. It, I said, oh, this is, uh, and Bills just, they just got the Dolphins number, man. They've had their number for years, and they, they certainly still got it. Anyway, uh, back to Devon Te Tez Walker. Um, wide receiver three is way too early for that. We, we haven't even seen him catch a pass yet in the league. Um, so, I don't know, man. I, I, I thought that he was a possible IR candidate. I think he still is and could be, uh, depending on if the Ravens need a spot on the roster. Um, but he's somebody that I just, again, I, I said if, if Ravens could get 350 yards out of him for this season, I said that when, when, when we first drafted him, if Ravens could get 350 yards out of him, that would be considered a success. I think that would be a big success if they could by the rate that things have started for him. Oh, good timing. Next question came from my guy Jarvo. He said, it's non-Raven related, but do you think Tua should retire from the NFL? Mm, that's a good question. He said, I think he should, or he should start wearing that special helmet or the guardian cap uh, that prevents you from getting hard hits to the head. Um, man, Tua, I, I, I just think he, he got some decisions to make, man. He got to think about it um, because that, that was ugly. That was ugly and that was scary. And that's, it's, I think they said it's Tua's fourth or fifth concussion, but that is his second concussion where he did that thing where his like he like clenches his fist on one hand and the other hand like it, it's, it's just it's really scary and football is obviously a very violent physical sport um and so many things could happen just like that and with Tua those things have happened enough times where it's like oh like hold, hold, hold up now like a lot of football players they have uh the, the 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 life that they have to live after football and it can be a painful life so with Tua is do you want to continue playing this game, seeing the rate that you've been getting hurt at? Uh, you could walk away from it. You could still have a lot of money because he would still get a lot of money that's in his contract. The offense would recoup a little bit of it. Um, but, like, what do you want to do? If it were up to me uh, with Tua, mm, so you, you can't tell nobody what to do. But what I think they should do, um, yeah, I just – the money's obviously great in the NFL. It's amazing. But – yeah, I, I would probably just, because you can't tell nobody how to live their life. 
Because Tua like, hey, I'm a quarterback. I'm making all this money. I'm trying to make even more. And that's his job. This is his career. But it's also his life. It, it, it's his life. So I think it would be best if he shut it down and maybe try to get into like a commentator role or something like that. Maybe try to get, maybe if he wanted to. But um, it's Tua. Tua going to do what he want to do. And I guess we'll find out what that ends up being when he's finally cleared uh, to play again whenever that might be.